Duke. I have run into a very obvious problem. So if you watched my live print stream, I printed this, but I didn't account for access to the ports. So what's it mean? I am going to fix it. That's what it means. And we'll print another one. Probably won't live stream it. So you caught me in progress a little bit. So what I did is I made the top ring that I just printed transparent here. And what I did is I turned on uh, what these boxes look like. Uh, the sleds is what they're called. The sleds look like. And realistically, I need to move the sleds a bit to get them centered. So, uh, let's see. I am just going to grab all of these items and move them as a block. And let, let's get them set right. So it's got to come over and left. And let's just see what it looks like. Okay. Let's check that side. That looks pretty reasonable. And let me grab all of these guys. And of course, they're too tall. So let's bring them back down to where they should be. Now you see there's a little gap here. So I'm going to move them left. And how is my lefty righty going? So it looks like I'm making a little bit of contact right there. So I'm gonna move it left until I see. All right, so that, that should be correct. That side looks good. This side looks good. It looks pretty good and Realistically, I need to move that down. Uh, so let me grab all of these and slide them down to the right height. Not that that matters. I'm not working with that right now. Okay, so the astute among you will see I've already dropped a box here. And let me center on the box. And... So ideally, the box is going to cover all the ports, which we're not yet. And I can figure that out by dragging the box down. All right, so ideally, okay, that looks good. So I'm going to need four more of these boxes. And uh, so I'm going to do a control D for duplicate. Whoop. Nope, not what I wanted. All right, did I get a second one of these? Let's move it. And I, I could have upped it. Right now I got a tenth of a millimeter as each increment. All right, so that box, actually, go, 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 go. Go, go, gadget legs. And I'll have to move it a little um, manually. So I'm gonna up my movement. Yeah, you see that. So I'm gonna do two millimeters. I'm gonna create another one of these boxes. And like, drop it right there and then do a control D and it thinks if you do multiple duplications that you're going to want to move it in the same area and all right so let me get this one set so as I'm seeing whoop you got to go back to a tenth of a millimeter So this puppy, all right, and it looks like it needs to go that way a little more. That 
looks good to me. Let's see, is it too far? All right, so let's select this box now. And all right, so we got to move this way. So we're looking at the gray area right here, and then we got to move it back. So we're watching right here, and let's center on that box again. All right, so that's the Ethernet port. That doesn't look like enough is showing. But I, I think that board is just mistakenly dropped in a little further than it should be. What matters is I see the, I'm like just at the contact edge of this right here. So that's good. All right, and so let's grab this box, center on it. So we've got to move in. And I'm looking to make contact with the blue. And I may have done that already. Yeah. So I'm going to bring it back towards me. Now, the blue object isn't something I'm going to be editing. I'm just editing this top ring here. All right. And now I've got to bring it over left. And actually, that board isn't centered in the cradle, because I believe that would stink if I had to do another edit. Okay, so we're, we're going to a couple of checks right here, is we need to make sure that's big enough. And we got to check, whoop, if I back out. All right. Um, is that board centered? Actually, that one looks pretty well centered. Let's back out some further. This board is not centered. So let's bring it over. Hmm. All right, so I think we're good on that. We're good on that. I might just increase the size of these boxes that I'm using for cutting. Um, yeah, so this box has to go over. And I believe that board is just set uh, too far in. Board. Let's bring this up. Can I touch that board? Yes, I can touch the board and I'm going to move it left. And that looks well centered. It just looks a little occluded. All right. And let's check right here. I click F on that. Right, so that board looks like it should go a little right. More right. Okay, so then this box has to go to the right. All right, and this board looks pretty well centered. Okay, so I'm going to now uh, drop the boards out. 
because I want to just double check against the sleds, the brackets that they fit into. And realistically, I can bring this all the way over to here without a problem. Likewise, where's the bottom of this box? There it is. And same thing for over here. should be perfect and we'll, we'll do one final check on all of this all right so obviously I can drag it over a little bit this way select this box and so this box definitely can go a little that way all right and let's see I don't want to turn that off because if I turn it off That one, whoop, what I zoom. I touched the wrong object, not that object, that object, no. Serious? What's going on here? Oh, no, no. This is the object I want, okay. That looks good. Let me grab this box. I think I can go, yeah, a little more there. All right, so now I'm going to grab these sleds and make them disappear. I'm going to turn this back to a solid, and then these are the cutouts I need to make. And hopefully, ta-da! And that's it. So it no longer nicely says top right there. So let, let's relabel it again. So we'll grab some text and I'm gonna do sans serif. Do we do caps? Okay, and we're gonna spin it around 180 degrees. We're gonna bring it up to our altitude. Let's see, where's the control? There it is. Okay, and we're gonna make it a hole. And we're gonna grab the shift key and drag this down. Bring it up again, and let's zoom in. Make it a little smaller. Is it even centered? We're using the TLAR technique that looks about right. All right, so let's zoom back in. And 
The question is, how deep do we go? I think that deep. All right, so, oh, not what I wanted. What I want to do is grab the two objects there. Hmm. Let me see, do I want to go further down? So that's just light contact right there. And let's see, we got the two objects join. And now it says top. Uh -oh. Does it say top any better or worse than right there? Where it got cut off. Yeah, it's about the same. Okie doke. Uh, so just so I have this saved in the right orientation, I want to print it this away. And in another four something hours, I'll have it with the proper cutouts for the ports. So didn't take that into account. All right, so we will export as an STL. Come on, come on, where's the file dialog? Thank you. So this is going to be top ring V2.1. All right, so let's fire up Cure. Oop. All right, so now that we're here, uh, let's talk to the 3D printer. And I'm going to reach over and turn the puppy on. You're going to see it connect. Boop. Connect. And we're going to go to temperature. The bed takes the longest to heat up. So I'm going to heat the bed up. I'm going to heat the head up. And you'll see the gra graph right over here. All right, so now, here's Cure. Oh, we gotta go to Prepare and File. I don't want Open Recent, I want Open. Come on, come on, come on. 2.1 is what we want. Ta-da! All right, and let's click Slice a Rooney. Bottom right there. And it says four hours in one minute. And we will click print. And you're now getting the octoprint view, which I don't need stuff taking up all of my resources. And we can see where, where does it say? Right here. So this is the top ring 2.1. The last print we did, well, it was uploaded five hours ago. And you see it took three and a half hours to print, finished 39 minutes ago. So we are back at it, boys. Back at it again. Uh, so we're, we're quickly approaching temperature. And do I do the G-code viewer? like I did last time. We're, we're not doing anything just yet. But boop. So once we hit temperature, and hopefully I have enough filament. Filament. Uh, so our temperatures are looking almost good. Let's bump this to 210. Because I'm frying rich. Frying the filament. So, okay, the unfortunate thing is, I was like, hey, maybe I can sell this. Maybe people want something like this. Just the parts alone are in the $700 range for this. Um, 
So that's like heat sinks, four gigabyte Raspberry Pi, four of them. The switch, now the switch that I'm using here doesn't seem to be available anymore. Um, So it was a plastic case, I basically took the switch out. Oop, are we printing? We are getting ready. So it's auto homing. So it just extrudes a line on the side there. Uh, to clear the nozzle, good good idea. That's just part of the printer program. And now it's going to print the raft, which is probably a horrible waste of filament. And you hear the gear skipping because the gap between the print head and the bed is too close. And that's why you hear that skipping noise. And you can see the filament is a little thin. But I'm not going to mess with it. Because when it goes to print, uh, after it lays a couple layers down, it'll be okay. What is it? Hold a knee box? All right, the skipping drives me crazy. Oh, key box. All right, so this was the switch, or actually this is this board right here. So I'm wondering, can I find one of these anywhere? One box. Okay, where do I buy it? Features. <clears throat> Yank. Wow, $31, $9 delivery. They are totally posers. Let me just... Serious, man? So I've designed this. 
around a product that's no longer available. Not, not at all fun. Anyhow, folks, we're back to printing, and I am going to sign off.